Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Desmond and now finally we have reached the final lab in CSO. So this lab is about state machine design. Now a state diagram looks something like this. All right. So this is the state diagram for this turnstile over here. And this node over here is our starting node. So everything starts here. So this node points to a lock state. That means that our initial state is a lock state. Then from this lock state, we have two options. One is to push the turnstile, which won't do anything and make a stay in the lock state. And another thing we can do is to put in a coin. So by putting in a coin, it will change the state of the turnstile to an unlock state. Now in the unlock state, we can finally push the turnstile, which would make us back to the lock state. Or if we put in the coin again, nothing would happen and we will stay in the unlock state. So in this diagram, we can see that there are two states. So this is a state one and this is a state two. And there are two types of actions. One is push and one is coin. Now this is the outcome for our program. We have two inputs, button one and button two. And then we have four LEDs that shows the output. Now this is our starting point. It points to the rotate left state. So in this rotate left state, this is our output LED. We have uh, an LED that is not light up, and this LED that is not light up would rotate one step to the left every time it moves. Okay, so when it reaches the end over here, it will go back to the first LED and then you know, keep on repeating this process again and again. So, this is what the rotate left state would do it will rotate the four LEDs left. Okay, so everything would go left. And when it reaches here, it goes back to the first node. Now, from this state, we will listen to button 2. We will check for button 2. If button 2 is not pressed, okay, we will remain in this step. Doesn't matter if we you know, keep pressing button 1 or not, because in this state, we do not check for button 1. We only check for button 2. So. It will keep remaining in this step until until the user or someone presses on the button 2 and release. Now when someone presses on button 2, it will jump from this state into the rotate right state. So this is another state. In this state, the LED will rotate right instead of left. Okay, so you move right. And when it reaches this end, it will go back here. So this is the rotate right operation. So you can see that this black uh, or LED that is not light out, we rotate right until when it reaches here, it goes back to here again, and this process is repeated. In this state, okay, in S1, we are listening for button 1. So if someone press on this button 1, it will jump back here to the rotate left state again. Now this is our code for the state machine. See, we have four LEDs over here, and this is our two push button, button 1 and button 2. Now we can skip these two lines and we move on to the main block. Now in this main, um, we will set port 1 as the output port. So remember that to set a port as output port, we put in all zeros. And to set the port 2 as input port. To set it as input port, we put all 1s into port 2. Now we have configured that port 1 is our output port. So port 1 over here. Is our upper port which are linked to the LEDs and port 2 over here is our input port which are linked to the two push buttons. Next we are going to move 0 to H so 0 to H is actually this we're going to move this into A and then to port 1 okay now what is we do is that over here let's try to do this 0 0 0 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And let's compare over here. So this is connected to VCC. This end is 1 because it's connected to VCC. So 1, 1, 1, 1. And then this end over here is actually connected to 0. And this is 1, 0. Zero, so these four are ignored because there are no LEDs connected to it. 
Now in this state, this LED will light up because there's a potential difference over here and current can flow from here to here. So this LED will not light up because one on both sides and this will light up and this will light up. So the pattern is like this. Light up, no light up, light up, light up, okay? So this is the initial state. Uh, sorry, this is before the initial state. Next, we will jump to the initial state, okay, which is S0. A jump, uh, we will jump it to A0. And from here, the first thing we do is actually something like an if statement. We will check if the button 2 is pressed or not. So let's say that uh, these two buttons are not pressed, right? Because they are not connected, the circuit is not complete. If they are not connected, that means that P20 will be 1 and P21 will be 1 because they are both connected to the VCC, all right? So remember that 1 is equal to set and 0 is equal to not set, okay? How to make the push button 0? So one way we could do is we could connect this circuit. So let's say that we connect B1 to uh, let's say that we push down B1, then now B1 is connected to ground and this, uh, you know, P20 would be 0, okay? So if it's 0, then it's not set. But in this case, let's say they are both 1. Okay, so the first thing in S0 is that it will check if P2.1, P2.1 is connected to button 2 and check if this this bit is set or not set. Now because the button is not pushed down, we have a 1 and it is set. So if this is set, nothing would happen and we will just move on to the next line. Okay, so if this is not set or when we push down the button, then it will jump to state 1. But for now, let's say that it is uh, the buttons are not pushed down, both the buttons are not pushed down, so both of the state for P2.1 and P2.0 are set. So in this case, we'll move on to the next line and we'll move A into port 1, which actually we have previously did. Now A is equals to, uh, the port 1 is equals to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, which is, uh, you know, this thing over here. It will turn off this LED and the other LEDs are turned on. And then we will uh, go to the RL. So RL actually stands for rotate left. Now, after this RL, our new A will be like this. Okay, so this is the previous, previous state. After RL, it will change into this because this is moved to the left so every bit is moved to the left okay and then the final thing would move to the first bit okay so in this case this position the one is previously at this position after rotating left it will be at this position okay and then we would compare this a so cjne and cjne we would compare this a with 10h so 10h is equivalent to this thing 10h is actually 0001 and 0000 we would compare these two things so cjne stands for compare and jump if not equal okay so in this case this thing is not equal to this thing right so we compare this to this and we, our conclusion is that they are not equals. So we need to jump. Jump to where? We jump to S0. Okay, so it will go back up here again. Now we will set. We will, we will check first. We will check again. So every time we goes back up here, we will check if button 2 is pressed. So let's say that both the buttons are still not pressed and we'll move to the next line over here, which move which would move the new A, which is this one, into port 1. Now this new configuration 
is actually different from our previous configuration now that our a is equals to 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 so in this case it is 0 0 1 0 so it will light up this light bulb no and then up oops sorry this is up also and then this is no and up so now our light bulb configuration is like yes yes all and yes okay and then after we move to port 1 we will rotate left again so now our new A has changed it has changed into something like this okay it will be 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 and then we will compare this thing this A in the CJNE we will compare this in CJNE we will compare this A okay this A to 1 0 H so we will compare this two again now they are still different okay they are still not equals so we will jump back to state 0 again okay so the first thing in state 0 is that we will check if button 2 is pressed now let's say that the button 2 is still not pressed okay then we will rotate left again so now the new configuration is like this right so this will become 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 okay and then we will compare this a okay this a to 1 0 h so 1 0 h is 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 so now finally they are equals so there will be no jumping okay so there will be no jumping because we only jump if this and this are not equal but now they are equal so we will move on to the next line which will move this 0 1 h so 0 1 h is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 into a so when we move this thing into a we're actually resetting the entire thing again okay so after that we will jump back to state 0 so what this code uh, what this line of code is actually doing is that the first line it will check if button is pressed if it is pressed we will go to s1 which is here okay so let's say that it is not checked and the second step it do is that it will set the output leds according to our a okay and then the third step is that it will rotate left and then the fourth step is that it will check if we have exceeded so this is we only have four LEDs right so we want to make sure that whenever the state is like this we want to reset it back we want to move this one again or we want to move this one back to here again okay fourth step is to check for boundary and then the fifth step is to jump back to S0 e zero 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 one zero 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 then set a to be zero 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 one okay so so this is how our a would look like so let's say that our a initially looks like this zero zero one zero and then after one rotate left it goes back to one so it will go to zero 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 one zero zero and then another rotate left it will go to zero 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 one zero 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 okay and then another rotate left it will go to zero 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 one zero 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 in this case okay in this case there's one more thing that we need to do because we only have four LEDs okay so this would be our four LEDs we cannot show all zero okay we cannot light up all LEDs there must be one LED that is turned off so in this case we will set this A to be 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 okay and then we will just repeat this cycle again and again so 
So what these two lines of code is doing is actually checking if it has reached, the one has reached over here. If yes, then we will reset the one to be at this position again. So we just, you know, keep, we want to keep this one in this four, four bits, okay? Now, let's say that finally someone presses on button two. When someone presses on button two, we would jump to state one, which is over here. So in state one, we check for another button, all right? So previously we checked for button two, now we check for button one. And a different thing is that instead of rotating left, we are now rotating right. So RR is rotating right. Previously we are rotating left, so RL. Now rotating right is just, you know, this direction. Okay, so instead of instead of this thing over here, we are going to do this. Zero, 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 zero. So let's say zero, zero, one, zero. So let's say we start from this state, and then after one rotate right, it will be zero, 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 one. Okay. After another rotate right, because it has reached the end, so it goes back to here. Okay. One, zero, zero, zero. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, see, now these four zeros occur again, so we cannot make this, cannot let this happen. So this is what uh, these two lines over here is doing. It's checking if A is equals to 80H. So 80H is actually, oops, sorry, one more zero over here. 80H is actually 1000000. Zero, 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 zero. If this is equals, then we would move, you know, we would reset A to be this. Okay, we will reset A to be this, which means that we would reset to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. We reset A to, to that state. Okay, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, this state over here. And then we, you know, we continue the loop, move right again, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, and then move right again, then we are actually uh, in this loop. So, this is our rotate right. Okay, so after everything, you know, we just keep looping for S1. And then every time before we run, uh, before we rotate right, we would actually check if and if someone has pressed on button one. Okay, so it's like this. When we are rotating right, we are checking if anyone press on button one. If no, we just keep on rotating right on the LEDs. So we can see that this is, let's say t equals 1, t equals 2, and so on. We just keep on rotating right until someone presses on the button 1. When someone presses on button 1, we are resetting this to 0. And when this is 0, it is not set. Okay, so when this p2.0 is not set, we will jump, right? Because JNB is actually, JNB actually stands for jump if bit not set. So now P 2.0 is not set, we will jump back to, you know, state zero. Okay, and then we will rotate left. So this is the state machine that you are going to build. At first, we will go to state zero and then keep staying in this state zero every time before we rotate left, we will check if the button 2 is pressed, okay? If button 2 is pressed, we will jump to another state, rotate right. And the program running in this state until someone presses on button 1, and then we change to this state again, and then we just rotate left, rotate left, rotate left. And then someone presses on button 2, we jump to this state, rotate right, rotate right, rotate right. And then wait for someone to press on button 1 and jump back to uh, this state 0 again, okay? So it can be a little bit complicated and it builds on the previous lab that we have done. So there are commands like jump if bit not set and compare and jump if not equals. 
All right. Uh, so let me give you some assignment tips. So as far as I know, your assignment is to build a pedestrian crossing line. Okay. So this is your question, right? With one button input. So in your program, you should only have one button input, one push button, and the system will be in stop state until a button is pressed. So stop. Initially, yeah, initially you should be in a stop state until the, a button is pressed. Button press, and then after a delay, it will go to go state. So after this button press, you should actually go to a delay before you go to go state. Okay, because it works like most pedestrian lights, where when you press the button, it does not change the the traffic light to go state directly, right? In this uh, go state, you will stay longer, longer delay. After the long delay, you will transit back to the stop state. We are not actually checking for anything here. So after some time, it will directly goes back to stop state without checking if uh, you know any button is pressed or not. So you just need to program this part. So uh, whenever you see a question, the first step is to think in terms of the inputs and output. So the input over here is just one button, okay, one push button. And then the output, you have a stop state and go state. So let's say that we, we use a red LED to represent the stop state and the green LED to represent the go state. So in this case, you will have two output and after you are clear about what kind of input and output that you are dealing with, you should at least uh, you know draw out a state diagram like this to visualize. Uh, you should visualize in your mind uh, what kind of program that you are going to build, what is the outcome of the program that you are going to build. After that, you should think uh, about the program in step two. Now in step two, there's one thing over here, so delay. So you should implement the delay subroutine, right? So in the previous labs, we have shown about the delay subroutine. So the delay subroutine would keep the program running, counting down, if you remember. It will keep counting down two, resi uh, two registers until 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, before it moves back to the original program. Now, I can think of two implementations here because there's a short delay and a long delay. So there are two types of delay that you need to code out. One is short and the other one is long. For the short delay, you can just you know use the normal delay and for the long delay there are two implementation one the first implementation is to design another uh, delay subroutine so you know in the delay subroutine there's something like this right move r1 ff okay so you could actually change this ff value so ff is all ones right you can actually change this to something else let's say you change it to 0, 05 and if you change it to 0, 05, then the delay subroutine would run faster. So it will be a shorter delay. So you can design, uh, you know, delay 1, maybe delay A and delay B. So let's say that this delay A is for the short delay and this delay B is for the long delay. And for sh delay A, you Use a smaller value over here, and for delay B, let's say you use FF. Okay, so this is one implementation, and another implementation is that you could have just one sub, uh, one delay subroutine, but you call it multiple times. So let's say that we have just one uh, delay method over here. Okay, and for long delay, we call this two times long delay, which is over here. So in the go state, before we go back to the stop state, we would call this maybe two times or three times, depending on how, how you like it. So for this transition from stop state to go state, we will just call it one time, let's say. So this is another implementation where you only have one del delay subroutine. So depending on which implementation you like, you can try to implement yourself and tweak from there. And then you have a stop state and go state. For stop state, it should be representing with a red light and for go state, it should be a green light. And then, 
remember that in stop state, you need to keep checking for the input using you know jump JNB method. You need to check for this port. Let's say that this push button is connected to P2.0. Then you need to constantly check for P2.0 until that until it is pushed. Then when if it, it is pushed, you should move to you know, go state. And then in go state, at first, before you do anything, you should actually have a delay. Okay, you should actually call delay first before you change it to green light from the red light. You should call delay first using a call, a call, and then after that delay, you should set the output to green light and turn off the red light. Okay, to do that, you know, just use move a something. Right, this is to set the output. Right, move a, move c, c here, move something to a. Okay, move this to A and then from A move to port 1. So this is how you set the output, right? So same for the green light, you should move something to A. So this you have to find out which configuration that you're doing. Okay, and then you use a different uh, question mark using the same command but different question mark. Okay, you need to move to port 1. And after this, you should call another delay which is a longer delay. So you have to stay in this state much longer before you jump back directly to stop. Okay. So I won't show you the code here. Uh, take this as a challenge to yourself. And when you've done it, congratulations. Uh, I hope that you could do it. If you couldn't do it, you know, comment down in the comment section below. Maybe someone else would uh, come and help you. Or you could also look back at the previous labs that uh, I've talked about and then uh, mainly starting from the uh, assembly language video. So there are three videos in total about assembly language. You just go back and watch again to understand every line before you could you know, try to attempt to do this assignment. So all the best to you. So all right, we are finally done here. And of course, if you haven't, remember to subscribe because it meant a lot to me and like this video as well. I see every likes, okay, and I will also read every single comment. So let me know what you think about this video series, what can be improved and what is good, and what should I keep doing. Also share it with your friends in WhatsApp or wherever, you know, because sharing is caring. And these videos may look short, but it actually takes me a lot of thought and time to design all these slides and whatever. I spend a lot of hours in order to just make one single video. So if you think that this video is helpful to you, consider a donation to me or buy me a coffee. So just go to buymeacoffee.com slash do or paypal.me slash do one two three. Or you could even try out other methods like, you know, if you want my bank account, I will send it to you. You just go to desmondyo11 at gmail.com. This is my personal email. So you just drop me an email and say that you'd like to buy me a coffee. So I'm actually earning nothing from these videos because I have not reached um, 1,000 subscribers that the YouTube require in order to start monetizing my videos. So if you're not interested in donating, maybe you know, help me to share it around. So let me reach 1,000 subscribers and you know, hope to see you guys in the next video series. Bye-bye.